but right now we're in rest mode, we're in pause mode. Yes, are you gonna be able to get some trades? Absolutely, of course. But again, stay in scalp mode right now. Stay in scalp mode until we start putting in lower highs. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge master your process and own your future hey guys good evening everybody uh just a quick update uh, again another day another kids event uh this time my daughter has i think geez i can't even remember anymore my, my wife is telling me to hurry the hell up and finish this up uh anyway so let's talk about the tape very very quickly um market played out pretty much how we thought going into uh today's trading day i thought you know, a lot of these names were very tired, uh, not because they're they're going to go lower, just because, again, when you have a pretty big run up and again, kind of in, in nausea here, you know, we've been talking about the re reclaiming of the 50 day moving average. Eventually, buyers are going to get very, very tired. And again, it doesn't mean we're going to go back down to the lows. It doesn't mean anything, just like I reiterated last night. It's just very, very natural, very organic uh, for stocks to take a breather before the next uh, before the next leg happens. Again, the longer we stay above and build above the 50 day moving average, the higher probability, like I've been saying for like the last four or five days, more and more names are going to be uh, pulled up. And that's exactly what pretty much happened today. Uh, the Dow down, you know, 250 points, S&P down a little bit, NASDAQ pretty much flat. But the most important part was, and I think a lot of you guys saw that, for the exception of, you know, really good reversals, and I'll, I'll talk about the earnings in a second, for the exception of really good reversals on on earnings on names uh, that, you know, from last night, Amazon, uh, excuse me, uh, Google, and uh, AMD, the majority of the day was pretty quiet, right? It was was really really muted. A lot of names were going up and then moving down, and then some call buying came up, and the so you know they they got sold. So today kind of played out um, kind of what I thought from yesterday when we when we talked about you know. Tone down your activity level, tone down and scale down your tier size. Just let the market breathe. Like I said last night, uh, like a fine wine. You pop open the bottle, you got to let it breathe a little bit uh, before you drink it. Um, the one, the one um, nuance, right? The, the one moving part that we've kind of noticed and we're starting to notice more and more now every single day is, if and maybe you guys noticed this, maybe you haven't, but have you guys noticed that the big move on earnings is not coming after the initial reaction, right? Usually year in, year, year, year in, year out, goes out, a company comes out earnings, they're down 10, 12, 20% after the close, they're up 5, 10, 20% after the close, and then it kind of plays out the next day. If you notice what's been going on uh, in the beta names, it started with Netflix, right? They came out with earnings. The next day it moved. Tesla, they came out earnings the next day it moved. Last night, Google, despite coming out with pretty good earnings, you know, was down 30, 40 points. Today just had this ridiculous reversal, basically went red to green pre-market and just absolutely exploded. Last night, AMD, like we talked about, um, was nothing. It was down 40, 50 cents, 70 cents had this really, really massive run. Even, even Microsoft this morning was up, what, a couple of bucks uh, pre-market, had this really exaggerated run. So maybe this is you know, the start, right? Because we always talk about there's always new markets. The, you know, the market that I started out 22 years ago is completely different now. The market that maybe you started out five years ago uh, is pretty much different now. So the market's constantly changing, the market's evolving. And maybe, you know, you know, maybe the earnings plays are, are gonna do the same thing. Maybe this is kind of like the new thing of, Come out with earnings, let the noise kind of filter out the initial reaction, and then have that natural move the next day. And that's kind of how it played out now, pretty much since the start of the earnings calendar. Now today, uh, after the close, you had eBay uh, again, pretty you know, pretty good numbers, but stock is down five percent after the close. Uh, you had too low, uh, you know, it, it looked fine, but again, the reaction again. This is another uh, case that the stock had a pretty good run this year or last year or whatever the case may be, uh, getting hit on earnings. Uh, the big kind of factor of what's going to happen uh, going for the next couple of weeks and see if we can keep this. Uh, gravy train flowing is what's going to happen uh, tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, you have obviously some pretty big names, right? Uh, you got Amazon after the close tomorrow. Uh, again, 
can they possibly miss their quarter two day you know two quarters in a row we'll see right you got Shopify right phenomenal company absolutely phenomenal company dare to say please let them split same thing with Amazon uh, you got Apple tomorrow right you got all these buyers coming in we saw buyers coming in placing their bets ahead of earnings we saw the 150s we saw the 152 and a half so nothing really exaggerated right so maybe you know maybe a little bit of cautionary tell there but we will see exactly what happens tomorrow you also have my favorite company Starbucks uh, reporting as well uh, overstock um, MasterCard Caterpillar Merck uh, you got a lot of stuff, micro strategies to see, you know, how well they did with the whole Bitcoin rise. So, you know, we're kind of set up as far as data for tomorrow night. But the the key here, for at least for me, and I, I got to get out of here a little bit prematurely, but the key here for me for going into tomorrow, just the same way as kind of going to today, you want to, again, continue to kind of let things play out. It, it's so necessary to really understand the dynamics of where, where you are and where we are uh, as far as the market. We know uh, we had a big run. We know we're, we are digesting. We know that gravity is also real. So again, for going into tomorrow, not you, know, you, you don't have these five-star long setups because everything is kind of now starting to fade a little bit into the middle of the channels, but you do have names that potentially could start cracking short-term support. Like look at Netflix, right? Netflix is on the five-day moving average for tomorrow. If this thing confirms the five-day moving average tomorrow, this thing can, could fall. Again, you know, I mean, look how much room you have. Uh, you have, what, $12, $15 to the 10-day? To the so if there is a pull, right? If there is a pull tomorrow, uh, a second-day pull in the NASDAQ, actually a first-day pull, you know, maybe this thing can, can get hit. You know, look at Roku. Roku really never... You know really never rally right it had this nice little balance like everything else got rejected here and now it's putting in this like this bearish pennant if this thing starts confirming this bottom channel here maybe this thing can go down to 300 again this is all preparation you know the market could kind of turn around tomorrow and start going higher and everything else is great but again you have to be prepared on both sides we do understand we're going through a rest mode a recharge whatever you want to call it so that's why you can't be too aggressive here I'll give you a perfect example Perfect example of why the market is a little bit tired, just needs to digest for a couple of days, right? So we had a pivot. We had a pivot in the room of uh, uh, Nvidia, right? This whole uh, 247 and a half, 248 level. They started coming in with some pretty aggressive call buying right at the word go. You know, the stock spiked up a couple of points, and just like any tired scenario, right? When you have usually when you have out of the money call buying, you're going to get a prolonged move. Say we had out of the money call buying, it hit the upper Bollinger Band and it never recovered, right? It never recovered and sold off literally, you know what? Sold off what? Five, seven dollars off the highs. Uh, same thing with Tesla today. Again, you had another upgrade today. Not that, again, Tesla's a monster, okay? So we can't really put Nvidia and Tesla in the same boat as far as like what's been going on with the stock. But, but even today, uh, a name like Tesla, that again, that Goldman Sachs upgrade, everyone's like, oh, this thing's gonna go up back to 1100. It had a good day. It did. It had a good day. It had some days, you know, it had some, some areas and intervals that were a lot weaker than the overall market sometimes. But again, it all, overall, it still held up very, very well. And I do believe for Tesla, just like every other, other stock that had big, big runs, like I said in last night's video, I do believe for, for Tesla to see that 1100 again, it has to successfully test the five-day moving average. Okay, whether that happens, we don't know, but I, I don't remember the last time a stock had a prolonged multi-month move without at least testing the rising five-day moving average. It's just it's just one of those things that is necessary in every single stock. I personally think if, if we can get a move down and again, this, this thing is going to rise, right? This five-day today was, what, 977? It's going to rise tomorrow. So I'm guessing it's going to be somewhere close to that 990,000 area. It has to test it. It has to test it, successfully test it, trap late eager shorts, and squeeze the living crap out of them uh, back to the upside and starts taking out uh, several days' worth of highs. Until it does it, it's going to probably go up and down, up and down, up and down, trap some longs, trap some shorts, but that's kind of the game uh, it has to play. Um, look at a name, for example, like Seagate, right? Just 
to kind of, you know, talk about names that are building over the 50 day moving average that, you know, maybe is not that traditional tech that we look at, but this is a nice looking chart. It gapped up above the 50 day moving average and kind of going sideways now, put in a higher low off the five day moving average. It's flagging. Yeah, a name like that uh, definitely interests me. Uh, tomorrow, Google and, uh, and, and Microsoft, right? Names that had really, really big runs today on earnings. Those are the names we definitely want to watch, especially if there's any weakness into rising 60 minute support, hopefully trapping trapping uh, or early uh, early shorts going red to green and start taking out uh, opening range high. So again, I, I think if folks, you, you, you want to do this for a long time, like I said yesterday, you have to learn how to shift gears. You have to learn and identify what type of market you're in. Right now, we had a great run up. There's still really good action, but right now we're in rest mode. We're in pause mode. Yes. Are you going to be able to get some trades? Absolutely, of course. But again, stay in scalp mode right now. Stay in scalp mode until we start putting in lower highs, test some rising support levels. And when they start taking out the previous day's highs, that's when you know everything's going to be good. Obviously, we're going to get a lot more, um, you know, a lot more clues uh, with Amazon, with Starbucks, uh, with Apple uh, for tomorrow night's earnings. And that point will make, um, you know, a kind of another feasibility study of which way, how aggressive or how passive we want to approach the next uh, next couple of weeks or so. Guys, have a great day. Uh, soccer. Definitely soccer. Have a great night, everybody. God bless, and I will see you all tomorrow.